And we'll a, need to vote now. I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Okay, thank you. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, please uh, silence your phones and your pagers. Um, appeals can be made by signing in on the cards. There are speaker cards if anyone would like to speak for or against uh, a particular case. Please fill those in and, and um, give them to, to our uh, ladies here. Uh, everyone will be given um, 10 minutes for each side and five minutes for rebuttal. Uh, when you have finished with your case, please exit the building very quietly. We'd like to have the invocation now. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think we need to uh, take the roll. Oh, yes. You want to do the roll? Sorry. <laughs> Martha Casabon. Here. Jay Delahousie. Marcus Hines. Here. Celeste Qureshi. Here. Bernie Willie. Here. Mr. Matthews. Here. Jimmy Davis. Here. Dave Doherty. Dale Mackey. Yeah. Mrs. Chairman, we have a quorum. Okay. At this time, would you like to lead us? Mr. Matthews in the invocation. And you, you do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, do we have a, a approval on the minutes of the March 16th, 2012 meeting? Uh, I went through it, but a little bit briefly. I didn't see anything wrong, so I'll make a motion unless someone else would rather. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. Please vote on that motion. Do I need to, do I need to vote because we have to? Do I need to vote because we have only? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Yes. Do we have any cases that need to be tabled? Yes, we do. Number two on the agenda, CC 1203-021. We have a request to table until the June meeting. Okay, just a moment. Let me... Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Which one was it, Helen? It's the second case on the agenda, CC 1203-021, and we have a request to table for... Uh, until the June meeting, and Mr. Shane would like to address the Zoning Commission. Okay, this is uh, ZT, ZC 12-03021. The existing zoning is an A2 suburban district. The proposed zoning is an A4A single-family residential with a highway <coughs> commercial, Highway 2 commercial. Um, it comprises of 116.30 acres. The petitioner is Jeff Shane. The owner is Taller Creek Shooting Grounds, LLC. It's located on the east side of Louisiana Highway 1077, north of Louisiana Highway 10, 1085, and south of US 190. Mr. Shane? Thank oh, you, Let's. Do we need to table it bef or, or let him speak? Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Casabon. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm here in Covington, and I represent Tallow Creek Shooting Grounds LLC, which is the owner of this property. As you'll remember, we requested a table last month. At that time, we did not have a staff recommendation. Uh, since that time, we have met with staff and are currently in the process of redesigning uh, our project, which in all likelihood will not only include a less dense zone, but also a planned unit development concept. Uh, it will require uh, re-advertisement and our hope is to begin the adver or make the filing of the new plan by April 16th, which would not bring the matter back to you until the June commission meeting because of the advertisement delays. So we would again request a table, uh, again with the promise that you'll see something other than A4A and also a PUD, and we look forward to being with you in June. Thank you. Do I have a much? I have a question. Jeff, 
Are you all going to deal with the lead remediation problem out there? Uh, we will be addressing that as part of our plan. Okay, because yes, I know sir. that's a, I've shot a lot of lead out there, so I know it's there. Sure. Uh, motion to table. Okay, I have a motion. I have oh, a wait, we have a. You have a question? Yes. I Doctor. need to withdraw my motion then. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's all right. Well, I have to withdraw my motion because right. you can't do anything no, I, but I, vote I, on a table. I understand. John Martin, Good Civic Association. Um, one thing I wanted to mention because we're tabling this is I had mentioned to the uh, parish before that there's been no sign up there, all right, stating that there's a zoning change going on. There's no sign on the highway. I travel that road six days a week, and uh, I spent a few days going down the roads, talking to the people across the street from it, and nobody has seen a sign. So nobody was really even aware that there was a zoning change taking place at the shooting range, and I would, I would like if y'all don't mind to please see that an appropriate sign is put there so that the neighbors know that this is occurring okay and and all the neighbors a lot of the neighbors have come would y'all stand up please and these are neighbors that had no idea that there was a zoning change that's going to occur at all other than i knocked on the doors for them so i'd appreciate it if y'all would see that that gets done huh doctor i remember um it's been a couple weeks and but i did see signage i'm over here oh <laughs> I did see the okay. sign, the original sign, it's which was with all this weather and stuff. But okay. I have seen, because I went out and looked at it, and it was there. But I agree, we just need to check with, with staff, check and see. Please. And, and, uh, but it was posted. Uh, Madam but Chair? it's been two yeah. months. Madam yes. Chair, since it's going to have to be re-advertised, it's it going to have to be re-signed re anyway. anyway. Right. So right. we just need to make sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Helen, if you'll. Make sure somebody goes out there and re-signs it because. Oh yeah, we've posted yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it's going to have to be re-signed because we haven't re -advertised. And we will, yes. Yeah. And Jeff. Yes, any yeah. So you're going to submit this then, uh, so that she'll go ahead and put it on the June agenda then. As we appreciate it, because we're going to be also requesting a PUD, it requires an advertisement, and we understand the filing deadline to be mm -hmm. April 16. And we, that is our hope to have it in time. We're obviously still finishing the plan, but to have it so that it will be re-advertised and reposted. Fine. Motion to table then. If, uh, okay, I have a motion. Uh, Jeff, you have something more? Yeah, oh. if, I, if I could, I just, I, I want <laughs> to. Withdraw my motion again. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. I really want your motion to table, but no, two, two points. So on. one is that many, many of you may have observed, but I know the property was properly signed initially. And at number two, um, I know that Dr. Martin and the Civic Association has been aware of the uh, zoning change for many months. Um, I met with Dr. Martin back, in fact, on uh, first mm -hmm. on Halloween, on October 31st. And we, we, I have the floor at the moment. And I, th and I know that um, I have confirmed with the councilman in District 1 that he has discussed with Mr. Martin on a couple of occasions that the case was being tabled. So I didn't want the commission to think that we're trying to operate in a vacuum. We know at some point that we need to communicate with the people, and we intend to do so once we have our plan. Thank you, sir. I live across the street. I don't know where you saw it posted at, mm -hmm. but I wasn't notified. And I'm well, directly across the street. I didn't okay. find out about this stuff we, yet. we will That's ensure okay. now that with the re-advertising and, and the resubmitting of the, the new plan, that there will be a sign posted where it's supposed to be posted. It, it, it looked like they posted it at the north end of the property, uh, and I don't know how far that is from the drive. But uh, in any event, it, yeah, it, will be, it will be posted. Uh, the staff will make sure it's posted. And now, without further ado, I make a motion to table. <laughs> Finally, third time. Third time's a charm. Vote on the motion, please. All right, any others to be tabled? Yes, we have another request here. Actually, this request is from staff. It's at um, number eight, ZC 12 And if I'm not mistaken, you may have some cards from some uh, of um, people who would be interested in, uh, in a case. And basically, the reason why staff is requesting to table is because um, we may have to clarify um, certain things about ownership. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, for those of you that are here, this is zoning case uh, ZC 1204028. The existing is an A1 suburban district. 
The proposed zoning is an A3 suburban district with a mobile home overlay. It's 1.5 uh, acres. The petitioner is Francis W. Harrison. The owner is Francis W. Harrison and Taylor and all that's listed. Um, the, the location is a parcel on the northeast corner of US Highway 190 and Louisiana Avenue. It's in the Ward 3, District 3. I'd like to suggest to maybe table indefinitely it, in case we cannot uh, resolve the issue within the next month. Okay. Is the petitioner here? Yes, she is, yes. Does she understand that? Is she, you're here and, and you're, you understand and you know what the staff needs, needs you to do? Okay. Helen, what, Bill, what, what is the problem? I, I, I'm not trying to understand. It, it, it's to be tabled, and we'll find that out. Okay, we, we have some of the errors we can't find. Is that the, okay? I, I just wasn't sure what the problem was. Motion I, to, ownership. Okay, Jim. I'd like to talk, Miss Taylor. Can you come well, up to the we, podium because okay. I'd like to actually hear some of this information. I went out there today and looked at the property. According to the staff report, it looks like the parcel that butts up right against 190 is actually 19.68 acres. Not, no, not, not 1.5. We didn't have, we, we couldn't find a survey of the parcel, so this is the best I could find according to the legal description we had. And, and I know this is not accurate, but we, I, I kind of so had to So that's why you're tabling it, though, because to get the more finite exactly where the area is. is. Yes. And, and I, I noticed that there is a mobile home out there already yes, yes. with a cover on top. Is that the same place in which you're trying to get the mobile home overlay and also you're going to live, or are you talking about moving another one in? It's for her to live and it's in the back part. I like to put another one out there where the one that's at. There's my uncle's is there, and I like to put another one like in the back. Okay. To live well, myself. I make a motion to table because you're gonna have to get all that clarified. With Would you? Planning. I suggest a table indefinitely. Table okay. indefinitely. Okay. Just it may take more than one month. Yeah. To okay. And if, if looking it, at the number of owners of that property. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to table indefinitely. I have a motion, and Mr. Matthews seconded to table indefinitely please vote on that motion <coughs> motion passes any others okay. all right we'll begin at the top of the agenda we'll go to zc 12030316 the existing is an a 1a suburban district the proposed zoning is an a4 single family residential district it's 51.27 acres. Um, the petitioner is James H. Simpson. The owner is Team Discipleship Incorporated. The representative is Paul Marone. And it's located, <coughs> this parcel is located on the north side of Penn Mill Road, west of Quave Road, north of the U.S. Highway 190. It's in Ward 3, District 3. I'd like to suggest to hear um, case, case number three as well, which is the same parcel. The first one is to rezone the property. And the next one is uh, for the PUD rezoning. For the PUD rezone. I'll make a motion. I have to have a motion to hear them together. I'll, I'll make a motion to hear them together. Okay. And to vote separately. And they to vote separately. Over. Yeah, Mr. Davis and then seconded by Mr. Okay, this is uh, ZC 120302. The existing is A1A Suburban District. Um, and it, it's located, um, again, on the north side of Penn Mill Road. And this is for the PUD overlay. Mr. Moran, give me other. Would you oh. like to? <laughs> yes. We, well, we made the motion. You made. Let's vote on it. I'm sorry. I'm rusty. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Now, Mr. Moran, give me the other. Uh, staff oh, comments. staff report. I'm sorry. This is zoning change request in order to develop a single-family residential subdivision. And as previously stated, a request for the PUD overlay has been uh, submit, submitted for the same site. The site is proposed to be developed with a single family residential subdivision of 102 lots. And the front portion of the subdivision is proposed to be developed with lots of 6,000 square feet. The center with 7,200 square feet and on uh, the rear part of the property with uh, 8,400 square foot lots for a gross density of approximately 1.99 lots per acre. At this time, staff would like to recommend denial of the request to rezone to A4 and request uh, denial, uh, recommend denial to, for the request to rezone to the PUD. 
Mr. Marone. Thank you, Ms. Casabon. Members of the Commission, Paul Marone on behalf of Team Discipleship, which is the owner of the property. Um, our 51.27 acres, which, uh, as Ms. Casabon noted, is located along the north side of Pin Mill Road, um, to orient you is right next to the soccer fields that are, uh, that are along Pin Mill Road and immediately across the street from the oil field supply yard that is located uh, on the south side of the road. This property was, uh, was part of the old Simpson Sod Farm, which ultimately extended from Pin Mill uh, all the way to Lake Ramsey Road. Uh, about 30 years ago, uh, when uh, Mr. Simpson began the sod farming operation out there, uh, the property in question really was very isolated and uh, was in a, in a location that was appropriate for that type of heavy farming operation. In about 2000, it became clear that the area was changing and that that location really was not well suited for that top type of operation anymore. Uh, in fact, it had, uh, there, there had, had been a great deal of development of residences on all sides of it, from the, uh, the, the Pin Mill side, even over to the Lake Ramsey side. So at that point, Mr. Simpson uh, began to relocate the facilities to, uh, to other locales that, uh, that, that were, more, were more appropriate. So with that endeavor, it begged the question, well, what then to do with the old sod farm? Uh, and uh, as a result of that, uh, you know, we looked back at that time at the nature of the ground. As a sod farm, obviously, there were no trees. Uh, there were minimal wetlands because the land was in cultivation. Uh, it was generally surrounded by residential development, so we quickly came to the conclusion that its proper use and compatible use would be residential development. And in fact, most of the old sod farm is now residential developed as a PUD. Uh, this is the last remaining tract of that old farm. And so when we began to look into how we would develop this site or bring this site into commerce, we immediately began with what is the use, residential. Uh, from that point, uh, we approached the councilman and asked for some direction and talked about potential ideas out there. And it was suggested to us at look at what the other developments are and use that as a guide. So that's what we did. And, and as you go out there now, and as you look at the zoning map, you will see a couple of items. One, you will notice that the organized development that has taken place in this area has by and large been done as a PUD. You will also notice that the other development that has occurred in the last 10 years or so has by and large been what we will refer to as strip outs people cutting up the property along the highway, and particularly on Penn Mill, you see a lot of, I believe they're about half acre sites with very nice little homes on them uh, that extend down that roadway. So in looking at those two types of development, clearly our site is not suitable for stripping out along the highway. And we felt like the PUDs that were there would be our best guide to determine what would be compatible in the area. We have one PUD to our north, we have one PUD to our west, and we have two PUDs to our east. So by and large, we're surrounded by PUD developments. And it is with that information that we began to move forward with, with constructing our plan. Now, the first uh, determination which we had to make was what is the proper density, and that is always an issue in any new residential development, and I suspect that is going to be an issue uh, that some of the residents in the area will be concerned about. I think it was an issue that the staff was concerned about. But our density was derived by looking at those other PUDs, and I'm going to run through them for you briefly. Prudent Creek, 2.4 units per acre. Pin Mill Lakes, 2 units per acre. Pin Mill Place, 1.81 units per acre, and Pin Wheel Court, 1.98 units per acre. Our proposed density is 1.98 units per acre. So I would respectfully su suggest to you that 102 lots on 51.27 acres is extremely compatible with what has been approved out there. And that would be a reasonable belief of what would be appropriate for the area. Now, in setting that density, we've also been able to maintain almost 27 acres of the track in green space. That's 52 percent. We were also able uh, to keep a large buffer off of Pin Mill Road. None of our lots front or back up to Pin Mill Road. And obviously with the PUD plan, we have the amenities that are required in which 
uh, you have come to become accustomed with, there are uh, common areas such as a pavilion, volleyball courts, walking paths, and so forth. And of course, we're going to have central utilities, and that's something that the strip outs that I mentioned before do not have. Uh, the other PUDs would be required to have that and will be required to have that. Um, so I would submit to you that our plan is compatible with the other organized development that has happened in the Penn Mill area and the Pruden area uh, over the last 10 years. Now with regards to some of the concerns that, uh, that I believe the residents may have and that perhaps the staff had, one is the A4 underlying zoning. The Unified Development Code changed the way we zone residential developments and in particular the way we deal with PUDs. Up until the Unified Development Code was created, a PUD was its own standalone zoning category and there was no underlying zoning. We simply came to you with our PUD plan and you either rejected it or you accepted it. That's no longer the case. Now the PUD is an overlay and uh, this is something that uh, we are all getting used to but that is the, what has necessitated the underlying zoning. So while there is concern about the A4, I tell you that the only reason we are requesting the A4 is because we backed into the A4. We looked at the other PUDs, we determined what the densities were. <clears throat> to achieve that density under the new Unified Development Code, we have to request A4. A3 doesn't allow us to achieve these densities. So uh, I understand that that is a concern, but uh, I wanted you to understand that, that, that we are uh, here and intend to develop the plan that we have here. Now, it is an overlay plan, and it could be concerned, there could be a concern that that overlay would go away. And that is something that I have grappled with over the last 30 days to try to understand and try to deal with, because uh, in any zoning that we do, uh, we often uh, have to concern ourselves with what I will call phantom issues issues that are not before us now but could come up at a later date and this is one of those issues. As I appreciate the, uh, the overlay uh, provisions, that overlay is subject to expiring in several years if we don't achieve preliminary approval. So, uh, or if we don't seek preliminary approval. So in order to lock that PUD plan in, we've got to go through the planning process. Uh, I can tell you that Mr. Simpson has every intention of doing that. If, in fact, this plan is approved, we intend to roll immediately into that process. Um, I would also point out that the, the A4, as a worst-case scenario, may not be what you think it is. And I've had discussions with people that said, well, my gosh, if the PUD goes away, you're going to have somebody could come in and have hundreds of lots out there. That's not the case. As part of the Unified Development Code, we have to do an A4 plan to establish what the maximum density on our PUD would be. We don't reach the maximum density, but we had to establish. If we develop this at A4, how many lots could we achieve out there? And I can tell you that it's not hundreds, it's 114 lots. Now that's more than we have here, and that is not our intent to develop 114 lots. But I wanted you to understand that if the PUD went away for some reason, and we have no intention of allowing that to happen, but if it did, we're talking about an additional 12 lots. Not 20, not 50, not 80. 12 lots. And I think that's important for you to remember. Um, there has been some concerns in the area about, about central sewerage. I can tell you that, that our preference, and that is something that we'll get into at the preliminary stage, is to tie into the existing facility so that there is some consolidation and not to put an individual package plant uh, in this location. Uh, I have confirmed with the provider in the area that there is room to expand that plant to take on our capacity, and we would, uh, we would hope to achieve that, would be able to identify that for you uh, at the planning stages. Um, traffic is another issue. A few points I would make up, even though, again, that's a, a tentative subdivision issue. I know it is something that is in the forefront of a lot of people's minds. Uh, I've driven those roads recently. I would point out that uh, to get to and from this site, you have two alternatives, actually three, but I'll focus on two, and that's Prudent to 190 and Penn Mill to 190. Um, obviously, the traffic study that will be required at tentative will force us to focus on those two roadways and those intersections. Um, 
I believe there is capacity on those roadways, and I believe that the, the TIA will tell us that. However, as we know, uh, if the TIA mandates uh, certain changes or, uh, or improvements, we'll be obligated to make those. And then finally, I would point out that, uh, that this project will contribute significant impact fees for roadways and drainage. Roadways alone would be $135,000 in impact fees. Uh, with the drainage, we're up over $248,000 in impact fees for the impacts of the development. So I understand that, uh, that my time is up. I, I would like to hit just one other issue that, that came to, to, uh, to the fore this evening, and that is the airport that is adjacent to our property. Uh, I have been told that there are concerns about uh, how this project might impact that airport. And I want to be clear that we are sensitive to and cognizant of their concerns, and we are absolutely committed to working with them in any reasonable way to address those. One of the concerns I know that they have is that the people that will move here will then decide they don't like the airport. They moved to the airport, we don't, want, we don't like the planes. What we would propose to do is to place in our restrictive covenants um, clear notifications at the airports there, to prohibit the homeowners association in those documents that would be filed in the courthouse from using that association to in any way impede what the airport is doing and has done out there. Also to have on the face of the plat notification that the airport is there so that people cannot in good faith buy a home in there and then say, well, we didn't know there was an airport over there. Uh, and if there are other issues that, uh, that the fine people at the airport uh, would like to, for us to consider, we are more than willing to do that. But the things that I just mentioned, we are committed to doing and we will do. We appreciate uh, your consideration this evening. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions at the appropriate time. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity. Do we have any opposition? Uh, thank you. Um, I'm Matthew Allen. I live at 72630 Clark Allen Lane, uh, cross Highway 190 from Pruden Road, which would be the main uh, egress to this. And I also want to thank uh, Mr. Marone for meeting with me, and we've discussed and gone back and forth over these plans a few times, and he has put in some of the uh, ideas that I've given to him about it, especially concerning the central sewage system. But our main concern is really the density here. Okay, sir, um, excuse me. Yes, ma'am. She didn't catch your name. Oh, Matthew Allen. Allen. L -L -E -N. Thank, oh, here we are. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Uh, basically, the A4 is not appropriate for this area. Every other piece of property is zoned either A1 or A1A in the area. He talked about, um, uh, what is it, Pin Mill Lakes. That is um, over a third of a mile toward the back through unimproved land from there. He uh, mentioned three other PUDs that have been approved. Uh, one was Pin Mill Creek, which was, was approved around two th uh, 2007, not developed at all yet. Pin Mill Court, uh, I, th I believe it was in 2009, but I'm not sure about that date. Uh, that is undeveloped yet, nothing has started. And then there's Pin Mill Place, which was approved sometime around 07, and they're basically bankrupt with no homes and infrastructure that's been in there since 2007. This is not a needed development in the area. And basically the code says for A4 that there, it should be for areas near main roads and areas of commerce. This parcel is over a mile from the main road, which would be Highway 190, and about four miles from the nearest store and other areas of commerce. And again, all parcels around it are zoned A1 and a A1A. It would change the character of the neighborhood and increase traffic on a really substandard roads. Uh, Pruden Road would be the main egress, that would be the fastest way to get there, and that's a windy road with no shoulders and big deep ditches on it. And there are always issues with people going in the ditches. Um, the, also remember, rezoning this in permanent. So, you know, heaven forbid something does happen and this plan does not go through, we are still stuck with that zoning for this area. Even if uh, this plan is not the worst case plan that we could have, I will uh, happily admit that. But uh, again, if something does go wrong, we are stuck with this and we don't know what's going to end up there and it's still zoned A4. So it's not really good zoning for the area. It's not good for the parish. And they have not shown a need for this uh, development either. So I would like to thank you for the time for letting me speak. Thank you. Um, Ms. Amy Gillen. 
You'll have to pronounce your last names. Gillier. Gillier. I'm Amy Gillier, and I actually live on Penn Mill. I'm three houses down from the soccer field. Um, I beg you, do not let this pass. Um, I bought my house eight years ago with my husband, and we like the area the way it's zoned. I have 3.18 acres. My neighbors all have numerous acres. The plan that was shown to, um, to myself only had 92 units. Um, apparently, it has changed. Um, but there's also a big piece of property next to this 51 acres. And it looks like that they left out one lot to where maybe in the future he could add on to this subdivision. And it would just put so many more cars on our, on our road that is not needed. Um, 100 homes, there would be at least 200 cars, if not more. My children play out there. I mean, not on the, on the road. And that's another thing. He kept saying um, it's a highway. It's not a highway. It's a road. Speed limit's 25 miles an hour. Um, another issue I have is um, the creek. It's a waterway that um, he has drawn up in here that we are afraid that the waste and the sewage will go in. goes through my property and along the side of my property. My children fish in this creek. We have little boats and stuff. I mean, this is my yard. I don't want... 100 homes and their waste spilling into this yard. Um, we also know kids that play at the soccer field. And the waste and the runoff um, from these vehicles in the driveway of these houses that he wants to put here, you know, we'll, rainwater will run off into the soccer field and then trickles down to our property. Um, I have so many reasons why I just think this is a horrible idea to rezone this to an A4, which can put four houses on one acre on 51 acres, that's just ridiculous for this area. Um, I had another reason, but it slipped my mind. But I just really wanted you to know that um, I'm here with some neighbors, and we just are not happy about this, and we just hope y'all really think and take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Lori, I'm giving y'all some extra. Mr. Um, Marone took about two minutes more. so. Well, I won't need that long. Okay. I'm Lori Olfers, and I live at 74242 Horse Branch Road. Actually, Penn Mill Road turns into Horse Branch. I'm Amy Gillier's uh, neighbor. And, of course, all ditto. All of the concerns that she has are all of our concerns, too. I have a little over five acres there. there and my children actually play soccer at the soccer field. When you consider um, a traffic study, you know, as he's... Uh, mentioning a tra and I keep saying he but it's Mr. Moran Moreau. Moreau I'm sorry as Mr. Moreau considered a traffic study I really think it should be taken into consideration that possibly a traffic study done during soccer season because soccer season is a year-long season you know I mean except for a few times during the summer and there are so many we are inundated with so much traffic right now and, you know, just on my property alone, I've had three cars run onto my property, over the ditch, onto my property, and I live right there. And, you know, so, of course, that's a concern for me. My children, I don't, obviously, I don't let them play on that part of my property, but, you know, it's just that the roads are so narrow, so windy, and I just, I definitely think that we are not suited to be an A4. So, thank you. Is there anyone else? I have uh, some more, but you did not wish to speak. Is that correct? I um, just want to make sure I haven't missed anybody. Anybody else want to speak? Um, could I say something? Yes. Give your name and address if you didn't fill out a card. I did fill out a card. Okay, I just you're, put that I didn't want to okay, speak. Okay, then. You are. But I'm Mary Henderson. I live at 14309 South Lakeshore Drive. It's in Lake Ramsey subdivision. And... Um, they said that they wanted to focus on Penn Mill and Pruden, but what you're not looking at is when people they come through Lake Ramsey Road and they go around through Horse Branch, and it's a mess. They're, the people, they've built the houses on, he said, the half-acre lots, mm -hmm. those people get flooding. They, you know, last spring they were out in the middle of the street asking everybody to slow down because water was going in their houses. And that's from Penn Mill Lake subdivision. So in my mind, that still hadn't been addressed. <laughs> you know, so you've got that subdivision with, I don't know how many houses, you know, on Horse Branch, which is, you know, within not far from where you're speaking of. 
And so I just think that that also needs to be considered as an inlet for that area because people travel from Highway 25, Lake Ramsey Road, Horse Branch, and again, the soccer field. But that's considered the back way in. Anybody that lives up in Folsom or wherever, they know that way. And so that also impacts all of that. I mean, it's all just narrow, two-lane, windy roads, <laughs> and that's it. I mean, it's probably only been paved for 10 years. <laughs> You know, so it's really just not ready. I don't know. I think it should be thrown out or tabled for another year or another time. Thank you. Did you say you filled out a card? I did. I don't. I did. Mary did, Henderson. It should did be. Did you hand it to her? I did. Oh, maybe I didn't. She's oh. got it in her hand. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry. She's relying. I'm sorry. And what no she, well, we're sisters. And what she didn't add to, we also have a sister that lives next to her. Mm -hmm. And she's been there for... 30 years okay and you know there's been some changes there's recently. been a lot of changes in 30 years but to mm -hmm. change it that much I don't know I know some of you must live in the country and it's you know you're fixing to turn the whole northern end into it <laughs> into the city right. so thank you okay how, how are we doing time? I'm sorry, one more yeah, about two more minutes. I just wanted to make clear we're not opposed for development and making money as long as it's done the right way you know, if it stays one house for every three acres, that's great, you know, but just not four to an acre. And, mm -hmm. e and even though his plan is not, it's 1.99, um, which I was told last night it was 1.8, but um, like, like they said, it, if something was to happen to Mr. Simpson, God forbid, you know, and someone else was to come in, it's already an A4. And then what's not to stop them from somebody else coming in, buying a lot next to it, and turning it into an A4. And then we're Metairie, and that's not what I want. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? You have about two minutes. I'm, a, I'm David Norris. I'm a lifetime resident of St. Tammany Parish. Um, I'm here tonight with a group of pilots from the Covington Vincent Airport. And we would like to thank uh, Mr. Marone for saying that he would indeed put in the deed the fact for perpetuity that the lots are underneath of the traffic pattern for the airport. Because when you're uh, doing a landing to the north, we actually will be flying exactly over those houses. And we just know the airport's been a continuous operation for 50 years and would like to keep it that way. Okay. Did you fill out a card? Do what, ma'am? Have you filled out a card? That... No, ma'am. I okay. tried to find a card and couldn't right find it. Right here on the corner, just, just so we have your address. If anything changes, they can contact you okay. on that. So if you'd fill that out for us. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Hey, Mr. Marone. Thank you. Just a, just a few points in rebuttal. Um, there was a lot of talk about the, uh, about the density, as, as I knew that there would be, and, and the concern about that, uh, and the character of the neighborhood. And... Um, you know, the comment was made that, uh, you know, if it was one house per three acres. Well, with all due respect, if you go out there, there is no development that has occurred on one house per three acres. And that's over the last 10 to 12 years, not one. The developments that have occurred have been the strip outs, which are, I believe, half acre lots, and the PUDs that I quoted earlier. And if you take those strip outs, and if you take the, the PUDs that are out there, I can tell you that the vast majority of the residents out there are living on either a PUD lot or on those strip outs. The individuals with three, five, ten acres are absolutely there, but they, they are not the predominant type of development or landowners that are there. So, if you look at what has happened out there, if you look at what the development has been, it has been consistent with what we are proposing. So the character of the neighborhood is not five, three, ten acre tracks. That's not what's that's not what's there in in entire in their entirety. There are some larger tracks there, but that is not the majority of the tracks that you see out there. Um, Again, I want to uh, try to dispel the belief that A4 allows four lots per acre. It doesn't. And I'll be happy to share with you the, 
the, the plan that we had to submit to establish the zoning, the number of lots that we could, that we could get under A4, because that determined the maximum lots we could have under the PUD, and it's 114 lots. That's what you could, so that is the worst case scenario. It's not four lots per acre, and I, I, I want everybody to understand that because I think that that's important. Um, with regards to uh, the concerns about Lake Ramsey Road, um, Ms. Henderson uh, is correct uh, that there is uh, a third way, and I alluded to that earlier and I, and, and I didn't talk about it in detail, but there are, there are three ways to get in and out of here. Pin Mill Prudent and Horse Branch to Lake Ramsey. Lake Ramsey, I would suggest to you, is probably not the most desirable or the route that would be used the most, but, but it certainly could be used. If you're going uh, to Highway 25 and north, that would, that would be the route you would take. If you're coming from the Folsom area, that could very well be the route you take. Uh, all of those uh, access points are going to have to be studied. All of them are going to have to be studied at points and at intervals approved by the parish that are dictated to us. And all of that will be done at the tentative phase. Um, I would just conclude by saying again that uh, if you look at what is out there, uh, if you take into consideration what we went through when we tried to determine how the property should be developed, we looked at what was there. We looked at the densities that were approved. We looked at the method of development that had occurred over the last 10 years. And I can respectfully tell you this is in line with it. And in fact, it's better in a lot of respects. It does have the central utilities. It doesn't have lots right on Penn Mill Road. Uh, it does have adequate green space, significant green space, over 50 percent. It does protect the creek that was brought up before. We don't have any development on that creek. And so I believe this is a good project. I believe that it's compatible and appropriate for the area. Uh, I respect uh, and understand the concerns of the residents, but I would urge you uh, to, to approve the request with the PUD overlay this evening and the plan that we have before you. Thank you. The opposition, the rebuttal. Um, I do have a little rebuttal. Um, the development I believe he's talking about on Penn Mill Road, I bought my house um, before Katrina. And um, when Katrina hit, yes, development went crazy right afterwards. But since then, there has been nothing. They did try opening um, up a new subdivision down the street on Penn Mill, and it's bankrupt now, which, I mean, I know that was already talked about, but I just want to stress again that the development he's saying that is going around on the street is, is not happening anymore. That, that's been done and over with for years now. Um, there's lots across the street from me that were um, going to be once Prudent Creek, which is not happening now. Uh, they had a, um, a, a story on WWL this morning, one of the subdivisions out here um, in Covington, where they have so many empty houses that there's just nobody to buy them all of the uh, repos in Penmel Estates. And it's just, it's gonna be an eyesore to this area along with all the other issues. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 52 seconds, <laughs> if you have. <laughs> I know, but look, I, I have to have my chance to rebut his rebuttal. <laughs> Fine. All right. Um, you know, something that, that I keep hearing is that it's compatible with everything that's been allowed up to this point. Well, all I can say is we weren't at that zoning meeting. You know, that, that what has been allowed, I mean, the, you know, the, um, what is the name of the subdivision that was gonna be right across the street from me? Prudent. The Prudent Creek, you know, that, I mean, that that has gone bankrupt, that nothing has been done. And, you know, as far as, you know, maybe there was a time that that we, we thought possibly maybe after Hurricane Katrina, I can't even remember what was happening at the moment, that we would have allowed something like this to happen. It was right across the street from my house. I never, truly don't remember ever seeing a sign for it, but, or else I would have been at that meeting. But, so I, I think it's, I don't think it's really fair to say it's compatible with everything that's in the area because, because it's not. So, all right, thank you. Okay, the compatibility. All right, thank you. I'm going to close the floor. Mr. Davis, comments? Yeah, Paul. <clears throat> if you weren't coming up here to uh, 
request a PUD. If this just came up on this commission to go from A1A to A4, mm -hmm. and I think that's the one big thing we're looking at with density changes. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, you bring the PUD up. And I do like the, I, I like the design of the PUD. That's mm -hmm. not a problem. The problem I'm having is, and I know the area very well, I go out there and travel that area a lot. Mm -hmm. Both of the roads that we're talking about, going down Penn Mill Road to 190 and also going down Prudent Road, 25 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. With the completion of this PUD at approximately 102, that's 204 cars coming out of that road, mm -hmm. trying to get out to 190, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even think your, your traffic impact analysis would even come close to approving that, personally. Mm -hmm. Now, on another point, um, that, concern, that, that concerns me a lot for safety, obviously. The other homes that are on Pell Mill Road heading out towards 190, when you say they're stripped out, that the homes are right on Penn Mill Road, there's really no development behind them, though. Not really. I think that's correct. I think that's correct. Okay. So realistically, like if you were to build phase one of your phase that you have, phase one, phase two, phase three, I'd be more inclined to grant phase one, and that's it. <laughs> you yeah. understand? Because of the de pure density that you're trying to get into the small area. I just think it's too, and I have to agree with the, uh, I have to agree with the, the, the planning department. I just I think the density is way too intense for the area. I think your the traffic impedance would be terrible. I think the uh, the drainage may be a problem even with a retention pond, pond mm -hmm. in the back, which probably will drain into the creek, which may not not be a problem. I don't have any concern about solid waste going in there, especially if you're you're hooked up to a public system and everything like that. But with that being said, I just don't, I personally can't approve this. Well, if I could just respond to those three points. I mean, to suggest that um, the strip outs, because there's no development behind them, in some way um, is a better method or a less intrusive method, that property behind them is still most likely going to come into commerce. And if you look at the ground upon which those were placed and take the acreage of that strip out, uh, I can tell you that that density is far greater than what we're proposing. Now, this property would develop over a period of years, four, five, six years, perhaps more depending on absorption. So I really don't think it's fair to say that, uh, that the strip outs are uh, less of uh, uh, less of an indication or less of a burden on the area. Um, as far as the other traffic, I would respectfully disagree about that traffic study. Uh, I think if you look at a lot of other uh, developments that you have, you don't have the ability of two, me two ways to get in and out, to disperse traffic. A lot of times they are one road in and one way out, and that is not the case here. So, uh, but clearly, the issue of the drainage, the issue of the traffic uh, will have to be dealt with regardless of, uh, of, of what we may believe at the tentative and preliminary levels. And, and whatever, that, whatever that says, it says. I mean, that's a, an analysis that is out of my control uh, and the commissions. It's left to the engineers to tell us what the impact would be. Uh, but I believe that, uh, I believe that it, would, it would be okay. Um, but time will tell. Uh, the overall density, uh, again, if you look at what is out there, to say that A4 may or may not comp be compatible, I understand the, uh, the trepidation. But if you look at the numbers, if you look at what has been developed out there, and whether it's been built out, with all due respect, is irrelevant. Because those are, those are densities that have been set and, and there have been four different ones where there has been a determination made that they are appropriate for the area. And so as a landowner, I look to that and, and I use that as my guide to determine what is appropriate for the area. The A4, only because the UDC requires us to do an underlying zoning. Believe me, I have, I have looked through that code to determine a method by which we don't have to do an A4 because that's not our intention. However, I have to follow what the code says, and after talking with Sydney and staff, I, there's, just not, there's just not another way around that, unfortunately. 
Okay, with that being said, though, even if, if it was left at A1A now and you had 17 lots, which is exactly what it would do at 51 acres, you're going from a, you're going 600% increase in density of lots. You agree? It's six Off of zero? From 17 to 102 is a 600% increase in density of lots. I, I would agree with that. I would okay. agree with that. All right. But I, I don't agree that the A1A uh, uh, is the appropriate zone for it. And I think that is dictated by let's go out and look at all the other A1A developments that have occurred out there. There's zero. None. So uh, I would respectfully suggest that's not, that's not the appropriate zoning, which is why we're here. Right. Mr. Matthews. Paul, isn't A1A what your client requested at the... Uh Comprehensive rezoning. We we requested uh, a more dense zoning, and that was not approved by this commission or the council. Okay, but it was you were granted A1A. Yeah, we were granted A1A. Okay, that's so, right. O uh, over it, it over went our from objection. Our and staff, mm -hmm. our and council's recommendation for A1, and they finally granted you an A1A. They gave that's you a little a little more density. That's correct. Um, Terry, let me ask you a question. Uh, I, I'm a little confused on what would prevent this property from going back to A4 with the PUD. It, it, if they do certain things with the PUD, they can never go back to A4? I don't understand how that works. Do you? My understanding is that if they do that, according to what Paul's saying, that they have a limited time in order to get the PUD approved. And then if the PUD does not approve, then it goes back and it stays at A, uh, what is it, A4? A4. Right. But, but if, if they ask for a tentative and it's granted and a preliminary and it's granted, they can never ask for any more property, any, any more lots on this piece of property in perpetuity forever? Well, you come back to ask for a rezoning. Correct. But as far as the, the PUD plan, the plan before you um, going away or expiring, it would not expire at that point. It would be locked in once preliminary was, was granted. So I could come back and say, you know, we really want a six here, but I'd have to go back through the entire process. Okay. It, it would not be a situation where uh, it would uh, automatically revert back. It would be a, a straight zoning change request. But if we never get to preliminary, and approved preliminary, or, or is it just request? Approve, I think. Uh, I think it's approved. I believe it's approved. approved. Okay. I believe it's if approved. If we never get to an approved preliminary, because that locks it. then this goes back to A4. I believe the way it reads is that it can go back to A4. And, I, again, I'm, I'm grappling with these new rules as well, but that it can go. I believe that's, it's, that the planning director has – has the authority to make that call. But he makes the recommendation, doesn't he? And then it would come before us to decide yeah. whether to revoke it? I believe that's correct. I believe, so I, I believe that it can expire, that the planning director has the ability to um, put it, before the commission at the time but, okay, the but expiration. If it, if it expires, mm -hmm. it expires. That's I mean, correct. We, we don't have to do anything. Really, can't, it expires. I, I think you do have to take some action for it to yeah. expire. I believe you do. And I, okay. Have, have the other three PUDs that are out there that you, you mentioned, none of them have been developed? Uh, have, they're, they're four. Oh, four. Okay. But, um, one has developed and is, is just about built out, which is Penn Mill Lakes. One of the others, there is infrastructure in. Uh, I don't believe there are any... any houses in there, though Mr. Allen or some other could, could correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe the other two have broken ground on infrastructure, okay, so, as best I know. So they, in all probability, have not gotten to preliminary? They have not. Okay. So those... They were under the old system. Okay. But those may now be whatever the underlying zoning would be, whatever it would be. No, no because no, those were done right under now. the old system before it was an overlay. Okay. So those are... But, but there is history of PUDs out there going fallow and never getting past anything. That, okay. that there, is, there are two out there that, that have, have, are in that, in that condition. Okay. So, That's correct. Um, the, the 
assurance that it will not go back to A4. The history is not good on that. Uh, Depending well, on your criteria. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Mr. Simpson's other development is the one that is built yeah. out, and I would suggest but, that his yeah, track record is, is okay there. But. Um, how far away are the, the other PUDs that you talked about? It, it seemed that they're not next door at all. They don't, uh, they don't adjoin the property line. Again, there's one uh, to the west, which I, two, blocks. two blocks, give or take. And then but there, there are several over a not a mile, mile. no, half no, no, mile, not so. a mile, no, half a mile. Uh, I don't think it's quite a half a mile. I think it's closer than that. Okay, so some of them, some of them are, are quite far away. Um, why, why do we need a four instead of a three? A three allows two, two units per acre, and all you want is one point nine units per acre. That's right. Because of the new. Uh, because of the new uh, plan or the new UDC. If you develop under the UDC, then you, uh, at A3, you, you cannot achieve this density. I mean, your, your density is down in the 60s or about 70 lots total. Well, I don't understand how that works. If, it, if we get <laughs> two units per acre. That's, <laughs> that, don't be confused by that. I was confused by that. There are two methods by which you can establish your density. You can do a yield plan, which is what I referenced earlier, which is to actually lay out an A4 or an A3 development with the streets, the lots meeting the minimum sizes and so forth, uh, retention, and whatever green space is required. Okay. The other is a calculation that is set forth in the code, um, which, and I'm going to butcher this a little bit, but you take, the, uh, you take the acreage, you multiply it by 75%, and then you divide it by the number of lots you can get per acre, something like that. I, I may have been off on my calculation a little bit, but... Yeah, you take the total acreage times 75% times the maximum net density, two units an acre, three units an acre, whatever the case may be. That gets your, for your a allowable density. For a putt. Um, that's correct, okay. for a putt. So that's why, again, it is not our desire to have A4, but because of the way the UDC works and the way the densities are set up, we don't have a choice. If, there was, if we could simply get a plan without the underlying A4 zoning, we would be for that. Okay. But, but we can find no method to do that under the existing code. Confusing, but <laughs> that's the code. Um, you, you mentioned several problems with the airport and several things that you were suggesting to do what you could to remedy those problems. Correct. Um, none of those things that you suggested uh, making it clear to the purchasers that there's an airport next door and all, would prevent them from getting together and suing to have the airport closed or doing whatever they wanted to do to try to close that airport. Is that correct? Uh, that's, that's correct in their individual capacities. Okay. Okay, so let's take that in two parts. One, uh, I mentioned the use of the association. Okay. Because... Um, it, is, it is perhaps easier uh, to use that vehicle to attack the airport than an individual. And so um, by providing in the, in the documents, the articles of incorporation and so forth, as you, as you well know, what a corporation can and cannot do, you set up ultra vires acts. Mm -hmm. And we would, we would use that as a mechanism to, to help protect the airport. Now, the other, there's nothing that, that, that I can do to prevent anybody in this room or anybody in this parish from going out and suing the airport tomorrow. The items that we have, we are proposing to put in place are not meant to unequivocally prevent somebody from doing that, but it's meant to, to give ammunition to the airport and to um, affect any claim that might be brought in a negative manner. If somebody has full knowledge of the airport being there, okay, and that knowledge was provided in multiple documents, all of which were of record, 
all of which burden their title, then I'm hoping what we are doing is helping the defense of any claim that the airport might have to encounter. Well, and, and that's, I think, the best that, that we can do. Right. And it, it, it is doing something instead of doing nothing. Correct. Uh, however, uh, nothing would stop all those people from getting together and not using the vehicle of the homeowners association. Mm -hmm. They could get together and form a um, pin mill against the airport corporation and so on. Um, and that knowing that the airport was there didn't really seem to help the New Orleans airport in mm -hmm. Kenner. Uh, they wound up having to buy out lots and lots of people to continue the airport. And those people knew the airport was there. Yeah, that's uh, a little pretty, bit different airport well, than the yeah, Covington but, Vincent but, Airport, but, but, I would, I would yes, suggest. Obviously it is. <laughs> a little different ball game there. but ob Obviously it is. But they, they quite frankly knew that there was an airport there. I, I agree with that. And you're telling that. That these people will know there's an airport there. So I take a little solace in the fact that right. well, uh, these people will know the airport I, there. I would point out that, uh, I mean, that, that holds true, though, for everybody that lives there now. There's nothing to prevent the people that have moved in uh, along Pin Mill Road on those half acre lots from joining <coughs> together and doing that. And um, so we're, we're trying to take the best steps that we can within reason because we cannot, uh, there's certain things we cannot accomplish right. and, and that's and, why. And I mean, I just wanted to make sure that the people that are, cons that are pilots and are from the airport, mm -hmm. um, what you all are doing will, like I say, is better than nothing, mm -hmm. but it really gives them little protection. Um, and, you know, we, we keep talking about those other, other PUDs, and just because they were allowed doesn't mean we ought to continue to allow more PUDs and more PUDs and more PUDs there. If it's too dense, it's too dense. What, what happened in the past is, is, is in the past. And quite frankly, I think with all of the surrounding A1, A4 is just too dense for the roads, uh, the area, the infrastructure, it, it's just you're fitting a size 10 foot and a size 6 shoe, and it just don't fit. Come on. And I would make a motion to deny. I, I would just ask that you go look at the go look at the property, because the, looking at the zoning map and seeing all that A1, that's not what's out, what's out there. But I, I appreciate your comments. I'd <laughs> like to hear from um, Mr. Um, from Bernie before okay. we have a second I, on that, please. I, I, I can still make a motion. You did. And I did. Well, I said before yeah. we get a second. Okay, Paul, and maybe staff has to answer this. Uh, you mentioned the pin mill lakes, and you mentioned the undeveloped puds that are out there, mm -hmm. uh, and they they are puds. What's the? Do you know the underlying zoning of those? Those were done under the old code, and so there is no underlying zoning. They are their own unique zones. Okay, you agree with that, Ellen? Yes and no. We've we've established an underlying zoning just to have, uh, you know, a density figure for each. Okay, and what is the density of those puds? You mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I think two per acre, roughly. Yeah, there's 2.41 units for Pruden Creek, 2.0 for Pin Mill Lakes, 1.81 for Pin Mill Place, and 1.98 for Pinwheel. So roughly 2.0 is what we're looking at. Between 1.8 to to 2.0. Okay. So that, what I'm doing, I'm leading up to the next question is, and it's probably to staff. I know we're talking about a PUD here, but is it still possible to, to do subdivisions under just a zoning, zoning classification like an A3? Absolutely. Absolutely. So why couldn't we just do an A3 plan on that property and then solve all the property, they all the problems with this? They want more land. Well, the A3 plan would end up with about 80. 60 or Maybe 70 lots, give or yeah. take, right in there. And, and there would density be. Density is the biggest, big, biggest concern here. There would be no green space under that plan either. Unless y'all incorporated it. Then your lots would be, would, would go down again. Uh, and you get to a point where you can't provide the central utilities, you can't provide the other requirements. And that's, that is the, uh, that is the conundrum that we, that, that we are in. And I know you've heard that before, and I know that's not a consideration for this for this commission, but that is the reality that, that we are faced with. But y'all have considered that A, that A3 plan? Absolutely. We worked very hard trying to, uh, believing as Mr. Matthews did, that the A3 should have been the zoning that we were in. Okay. Through the process, we became educated and more familiar with the way the code works, and we're disabused of that notion. Ms. Celeste. 
Um, I think St. Tammany Parish is a, a wonderful parish in that we can go out and buy five acres of land. And when you go out and buy five acres of land, you don't want to see developments across the street where you only have, you know, quarter, half acre lots. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it puts the citizens in a very precarious situation. Then what do they do? Do they have to move out further so that they can, you know, fulfill their dream of acreage? So um, I'm in agreement with the rest of them, and I actually am going to second the motion to deny it. Can I say something? Sure. Uh, this is my particular area. A little history on from Lake Ramsey to the pin mill before a lot of you were even out there. Um, what we had was oh, lots of record. And what he was talking about, the houses being built out on the highway. It wasn't houses per se, it was trailers. And um, when pin, the lakes of pin mill came in, it was an opportunity for us under the PUD to allow, because they didn't have the water, the sewerage, it was in the ditches, it was, you know, a particular, because you're not looking at just one particular area from 190, you're re really looking at a whole, um, probably um, 200 acres, which is also, by the way, part of the conservatories on one side and Lake Ramsey's on the other, in this whole area, and Mr. Thompson has, has worked with this and looked at it, to how to improve that area. And when we when they did the Lakes of Penn Mill and some of these other subdivisions and stuff, it was really because they had started building out on the highway where every 100 feet they had a driveway. And that's basically on the end of the road that you're talking about that um, you have a driveway. Uh, it, it wasn't subdivisions, it, it was um, just people selling off the houses and stuff. We put the other PUDs in, one particular one that, that hasn't taken off was put into an area in which we, as a commission, um, made them, uh, th they had to be raised. They had to be on um, pilings because of the particular area. I don't know if, if some of y'all remember that, and I really feel like that's something that people don't want, and maybe that's why that particular one went, um, went under. But we're looking at a whole area here, and when you're talking about getting the water, the sewerage, um, and in this particular area, it was an area we didn't have that. And so by doing the PUDs and um, it, it really, I, I know the density was there and people were there, but most people have, the Lakes of Penn Mill has been built out because they were affordable homes. And yes, when the hurricane hit, it, it, it really took off. But it's still a, a need for affordable homes. Not everybody can afford the five acres and, and those that, that can, they usually, you know, buy father out and that sort of thing that I feel there is a need for, um, you know, more uh, of the smaller, you know, the lots that, that people can afford. Um, the density, uh, we, we had talked about reducing maybe, um, it was some of the lots that we didn't like in the, the 102 to I think it was a 95, like in that cul-de-sac particular area. But a lot of this was, um, you know, looking at, at reducing it. But it still, uh, unless it was under the 70 lots, would not fit in the A3. And then that, you know, people, I know he wants more lots, but it just gets to a point of being, being costs prohibited to mm -hmm. put the water in sewerage. So I guess what I'm saying is Mr. Thompson's looking at what was in the area and what was approved before for the purpose of securing that water sewerage um, that the areas that the creeks were not polluted and as it, as they were on some of these houses that it was just, it ran in the lake. So that was some of the pluses that, that he was looking at at, um, at this particular uh, PUD, that it's a lot of land um, that uh, can be developed in, in other ways and um, but I, like, like I said, as talking to him, um, he didn't have a problem except for the density. He would like to see like 10 or so lots taken out in, in one particular area and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not opposed to development at all, but addressing your issue for a need, I believe that there are a lot of houses out there given the current economy mm -hmm. that fulfills the need of housing. Oh, 
So I don't think that, you know, it needs another development to fulfill that current need because there are a lot of houses out there right now. So, um, you know, I just, I just don't think right now it's needed. Maybe in a few years it'll be needed, but I don't think now is the time. Call the question. We have a motion on the floor in a second. It pertains to, yes, just the zoning. This will be on um, the 16-016, ZC-12-0301. We are, but we're voting on them separately. Okay. The motion, the motion is, is to, to deny, deny. Okay. on 16. Please vote on that motion. Okay, oh, there it is. I can see them now. Yes, to deny. All right. So we have uh, four to deny and six. I see five here. I pressed mine, no. Mine didn't come up. Oh, I know why. I'm not under Casabon, I'm under Lombard. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's where it is. Okay, five four. Is that enough? Yeah, it's a majority. It's a majority. Okay. It goes as a deny. Do I have a huh? The denial and the five no is saying no. So at five four, the motion would fail. Yeah. Yeah. It failed. Yeah. So you, you could entertain another motion. Mm hmm. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Madam Chairman, I'd put a motion on the floor to approve. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a second by who? Who did the second? Mac Mackey. Mackey, okay. Matthews. Matthews. Okay. So it's the same. Uh -uh. Five four, so we approve. Motion approved. Do we need more than five? No, five's okay. So, so motion. You don't need a two thirds majority. So we need five. motion carries. It's a different motion. We we voted <coughs> down that the motion to deny failed. Failed. Motion so the to motion approve to approve passed. has passed. With five votes. He said that's the majority. Five, four. You don't need a two thirds vote on it. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. You got a you, we have you, you, nine you people. have a majority. You have, but you don't need a two thirds. The people here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we, that's what my question was with the nine. Terry, do we need a majority of the commission? Or the majority of the members present, which is it? The majority of the, the commission. People. In that case. The majority of the commission. Yeah. Then we don't have a majority of the commission. Is that correct? No. Mm -mm. No. It's the majority of those that are present, present. Right. voting. It's the majority of the people <clears throat> present. And we have so nine people, and it's five uh -huh. to four. So the simple majority passes the motion that we have here that we voted on. Right. We don't need a two-thirds majority to. Two -thirds. No, not two-thirds majority, but do no, we need a majority of the entire commission, we need. or only a majority? Only waivers do we need. Oh, majority, majority of the people present. Majority, of the people mm -hmm. majority okay, present. That's that's the question. Just before we, if appropriate, and I can comment, comment, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> yeah, she was just saying Mr. Matthews voted. He didn't make the motion to approve, which she was confused. All right, I'm going to say the motion. Pardon? I just, I, I mean, before we vote on the next case, I think there seems to be some consensus that perhaps the plan as it's laid out needs a little tweaking. So we don't necessarily have to rush 
to this other vote. I mean, we can talk more about the case before we vote on it or we can table mm -hmm. uh, the PUD, which may would, not be a bad idea. I w <clears throat> do you think, but I don't wish to table the PUD if we've just granted him rezoning but, yeah, of the but, of but, fourth. But I, I, we may <clears throat> want more time. We may want to table it. Right. If, if and I, I think that's what I'm saying is what, we need to maybe have a little bit more discussion on the commission. I, I understand that we heard both cases together, uh -huh. but that doesn't mean that just because we voted for the A4, we have to automatically approve the PUD as, as is. is. I mean, this is a uh, admitted by uh, the petitioner a fairly yep. uh, dense project, and maybe we ought to step back a little bit and look at it and say, you know, as a community meeting or table in this and having some more discussion on it uh, to get but it in a different format. Do you want to table it, Jay? I'll second Okay, Mr. So. Matthew, can I ask this? <clears throat> okay, we've just voted to approve a zoning change. Correct. If they decide to change their mind, I would rather have this PUD in some form locked into place. Is that, is that, well, that's what I'm, This no? is just an overlay. This, this so won't, all we're yeah, is the overlay. This won't this lock anything. Tentative. This won't lock anything. If we, if we approve the PUD overlay, we haven't no, locked anything. No, no, no. No, we have just approved rezoning just it. Approved. Correct. Right. To an A4. And if we approve the PUD overlay, we haven't locked anything into anything. But you have for two, but for at least two years, it's locked. It's locked for two years. It's locked for two years. Just if overlay. if, if just I could, well, yeah, let's it, just if take I could it. make one statement to, to what Mr. Delahousie is saying, and it goes back to what one of the ladies mentioned earlier and what Ms. Ms. Casabon mentioned. Um, through the course of meeting with Mr. Allen and talking with him about some of these issues, we did devise a, another plan. Sorry, we did, we did reduce the lots climb. from 102 to 92, and that is the plan that, that we had asked them. I had shown both plans to them. So, uh, and we understand that there is uh, a request from, from you know, Mr. Thompson, and if it helps this commission with the existing PUD, we are happy to remove those 10 lots. Uh, I mean, I have the plan before me. I can certainly submit that. Uh, it is, by and large, very similar, except the lots to the far north that wind around that are in some of the, uh, uh, the very northern northeast area. Uh, those are, those are uh, deleted. And we bring the development down. We increase the green space. So if we are happy to make that amendment, if, uh, if that amendment uh, gives the commission more comfortable, more, more comfort. It, it, it does reduce the density and does increase the green space. Well, Paul, um, that won't be before us tonight, the size of the, uh, of the actual PUD. That will come before us at tentative and preliminary. Um, what I can't, the, what, the, a, a, what we would be approving tonight is a, a PUD, the, and a PUD that may have Two units or no, 150 you, units. You would be We're approving, not approving the plan. This PUD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Yes. You, you're you're approving. That's so that's what, if you approve this. What are we doing plan? at tentative and preliminary? If if the if the plan is changed, they will have to come back through major amendment to the PUD. Yeah, that's we, why at zoning. It, it does it's it does lock in. in what is on this plan now, for two years. To answer your question, tentative with a PUD. Is um, is really only about Check. the traffic, right? Because the lot layout you really have set as part of the PUD approval, so it's right. it's a little bit different than doing a straight A1, A2, or A3 where you're not seeing a lot a lot layout. The PUD you are approving what is before you this evening. If we want to change that in any meaningful way, we've got to come back through with a major amendment to the PUD, as as Ms. Lambert noted. Then so. So tentative is just traffic preliminary is primarily then, just engineering. Then we so need some discussion. That's on my this. point. And you want to make a motion to the table? Yeah, but that's not uh, I wanted second. to see who else maybe felt similarly or had any other comments or wanted to make any recommendations or slice and dice what he already presented to us here tonight. Well, Pa already <clears> mentioned <throat> one with ten less slots or so. I mean that's right. That's up for question right there. You know. Right. That, where, where would those ten less slots? But he said on he said the, the northeast. <clears throat> this is this is the plan I, this that shows the ten less lots and has all of the data. Again, we had we had given this plan um, to the residents and hope that it would uh, you know it, they would find some more comfort in it. 
they did not, which is which is fine. Um, but I mean, we're we're prepared to, to to make that amendment. I mean, I can I can present to you exactly what it is. All the data is here. Uh, basically, these lots go away, and there's a cul-de-sac here, and this all turns into green space. And that's sort of what Mr. Thompson had had told him to pull. I mean, and all, with, all of the data the is, is here, the, the breakdown of the green space. Everything that would be required uh, is, is here that I'm happy to submit. I would prefer to have some commitment, even if you have to come back with an amendment, if we were, you know, or Mr. Thompson requested an amendment, mm -hmm. because if my understanding is right, what I'm trying to say is it's that <laughs> We have just changed this to A4 on the premise that we would have the PUD. If we decide to table and they decide not to come back with this PUD and drop it, we've given them A4. Is that my understanding? Well, the council can still deny it. I mean, yes, let's not I know, that. but so, I'm I mean, just saying. Truth I, be told, <clears throat> we haven't given anything. All we're doing is recommend it. Right. Correct. Well, uh, right. Are y'all satisfied with this particular dropping these, or do you want to table it and look at it further? I, I wish what? to table it. Whoever said it, the second that I don't have that drawing, I don't know what it is, uh, and these uh, people from that area don't have that drawing either to mm -hmm. be able to speak out with any uh, knowledge. Okay. So I think tabling is the have, way to go. I have a motion. Motion to table. Second. Just and yep. before we vote on it, <clears throat> is there any other? Suggestions yes. you want Mr. Marone to walk away from this pulpit with before he comes back in terms of other things to consider and changes to his proposed PUD. That's the other. It was the, uh, I think we should have, during the tabling procedure, have a town hall meeting with, mm. with, the, with, the, with the residents and talk to them and also have uh, Councilman Thompson attend. Probably not a bad we, idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. idea. Will you get in touch with Mr. Thompson and, and we have the cards here um, on those people. Paul, you're in agreement with suggestions that? for that. Uh, to discuss. Certainly if uh, if the commission sets a meeting, I will be in attendance. Okay. So I'll make a motion for that to add to the motion I, tabling. You know, you can and add to the table. We just all want all to, we have I is have a table motion, motion and, okay. and, and table there's, a, question, there's a suggestion yes. that staff or right. whoever yeah. call if a If you wish a, to a set meeting. that up, I'm no, I can't call. speak for Mr. Thompson, but yeah. we could get them to check on the dates that okay. the building is available. But I have a motion and I have a second okay. to table. Please vote on that motion. Do you want to set it as a community meeting? Yes. yes. Do you have a, um, a date open? This should be um, April. 17th which is the a Wednesday? third a Tuesday. Tuesday of the month all right third Tuesday is that available who, okay who, who like will we attend? have attend we can't cannot want, have a okay, quorum I I'd like, I'd Davis, like to attend Mr. Matthews Mr. Mackey anybody else interested in attending that April Tuesday April the 17th how many people for can a we have community four? meeting we can have four you can't make that one Anyone else? Four, four would be a quorum? Four, four is a quorum? No, you can have yeah. four. four. I'll be there. Bernie, do you want to be there? Okay. Do we want right. six or seven o'clock? Let's uh, Six o'clock people or seven o'clock? Yes, ma'am. What's that Madam time? Madam Chairman. Now? Madam what's Chairman. The final date? I've, I've just been handed a copy of the Code of Ordinances. Uh, relative to the uh, the quorum oh. necessary and in fact it uh, it does take a majority vote of the membership of the Commission oh. Oh, and this right. is read directly so our under from the motion okay. fails so the motion fails so you have two motions both motions have failed so does that mean that it goes to no the vote. council without a recommendation mr. Hall okay, my understanding is that it would yeah, it goes, fact, to goes, to council council goes to the council without a recommendation. In, in light of that, then the I would, be I would <laughs> urge you not to sever the cases. Correct. Yeah. I, right. would, I, would, uh, I would urge that that case, the, the PUD case, be allowed to go up as well. Mm. As is? Um, I, I think so. I mean, I don't, at this point, I think uh, the, Helen? the matter is going up to the council without a recommendation on the zoning. 
And so. the, the two really should be together because the intent is to develop so it as a PUD. Um, okay, this one would go for the next month, not this Thursday. That is so correct. So the 17th. So That's correct. Would we still have time to have this April 17th meeting about the PUD? I would suggest with it going up and not appearing before the commission again that you allow it to simply go up to the council. Because we would be meeting with the commission, but the commission would be taking no further action on All right. it. We, we have two motions. We have a motion before. A motion. We have a motion that two motions that failed. Right. So it okay. goes. Well, well, hold on. Hold on. Um, so we have no motion on the floor. Okay. We can make another motion if we want. Someone can make a different motion. Someone can make a uh, re-urge one of the, the other motions that failed. And see, we, yeah, or we could re-urge any one of those two motions and re-vote and see if it now passes. Or we can make, uh, someone can make a motion to table both cases. And it would not go to the council. Do that, yes. So, but I would make a motion to table, but to re urge, but the action's been taken. I don't think you can go do no, that. No, I think you can. I don't, I don't think you so. can. You, you can have a motion to reconsider. Action's been for, taken, it's gonna have to go to the council. As no, it is. no, we can have a motion to reconsider. To reconsider, uh, somebody on the prevailing side would have to, um. Make a mo w so that motion would have to come from somebody on the prevailing side. That's correct. To re-urge it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which means the no's on the first vote. Somebody from the no's on the first vote vote would have to re-urge. Okay. Uh, That's you're a correct. A motion to deny. Or, or or anything. They would have to have a motion to reconsider. No. No, because no, it's no. got no. It's got to come back. For, I mean, it's a it, it has to be on the other side. I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. The motion needs to be to reconsider. And then and we can reconsider and do anything. That's correct. And then we can do anything we want. That is correct. All right. To, to table it. Is there a motion from the, any of the people that voted no on the first motion to reconsider? Well, you made the motion, so we more than no, would I, yes. no, no. I voted yes. I voted yes to deny. Anybody that Sorry. voted no on the first motion, would any of those people like to make a motion to reconsider? No. Madam Chairman, I would put a motion on the floor to reconsider uh, the first motion. Okay, I have a, one, a motion to reconsider. Who second it? I can't hear him. Does it have to be a no person to second? I would think so, yes. All right. <laughs> I believe so. It's got to come from yeah. the prevailing yeah. side. That's, I, that I, would, I would expect so. The prevailing so. side. I don't know. How can it be on a prevailing side when we didn't have the majority? No. We, it, 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 you just you most, voted no. The most votes. It's not prevailing. This is cluster. Come on, let's get this thing on the road. Come on, let's get this thing on the road. On that to table both motions. I don't want to put a fly in the ointment, but I mean, we only have non commission members right now. So it that is. is the majority of the membership. No, we don't. How's we don't that? have anybody else that has been uh, reappointed. My point exactly. We only have they nine have people. We don't in. have That's 11. What I'm yeah, the, the, the ones that are not here are still serving until they're. Re, uh, until somebody takes their seat. Emil is still on the commission. If, if, if he came tonight, he could vote. I think that's, I think that's an issue. Uh, I have not received, nor has the council office received, any notification uh, formally regarding the uh, service of the two appointees uh, from the parish president's office. Uh, they served until such time uh, as other appointments were made. Uh, I've received no other notification that appointments have been made, so therefore uh, the two previous presidential appointments still serve on the commission until we're notified. If that's happened, we haven't been notified yet. <coughs> well, look, this motion is before the floor here. I mean, or, or, or this, this item that we're discussing 
we need to either do something about it or go, or, or go home, one or the other. I'm getting tired of sitting here listening to it. Okay, so, uh, you know, right. it's, uh, we've, we've, the motions, every, every motion we, has failed. But we, so I think we need to move on, let it go to the council as it needs to go, whatever it needs to do. And then vote on the PUD. And, 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 uh, and, and if you don't vote on the PUD, it goes as it is to the council. So let no, it go to the council, let the council please. handle it. No, yes, we're not we considering have, because it, it Well, right now, it we have a, right now we have a motion on the floor to reconsider. I yes, have, but you didn't get a second, so it's, it's, if you don't get a second, I, I couldn't hear. I asked second. two we seconds. We got a second. Okay, I did get a second. It was low, but I got a second. But, but who did you so get right it from? Now, did, you, did you get it? Burn. Yeah, Bernie. Oh, I couldn't okay. hear. That's what I asked who, who oh, what. Case. Okay, let's vote, vote to re reconsider. Hello. All right, and we are reconsidering. Okay, I know. Okay. Uh, we now we make a motion to table. And I second. All. Okay, we have a motion to table the uh, ZC1120316. Uh, we Correct. vote on that. We were voting on them separately. Yes. So I have a motion to table and I have a second. Please vote on that. And which issue is that one? The first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. We this this is a motion to table it. Yes. This is a motion to table, so we can also table the PUD and we can look at this together. Since we don't have the majority of the people here too. Okay. No, we didn't. We didn't we get done around to doing that. Did we? This is for 016. Yeah, Madam Chairman. Yes. What's the result of the vote? Nine zero. It, it's it it's approved to table. Okay. Now. The second consideration is the motion is the PUD, and I motion make a motion to table. What we, no, no, it has not. No, no. that was the zoning. Okay, no. do I have a motion to table? CZ twelve o three twenty three. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Motion to table. Okay. Mr. Mr. Willie seconded. All right, vote on that motion to table. Motion carries. Both those items will be tabled. Um, Do we want to have a community meeting? Yeah. Community meeting is April the Tuesday, April the seventeenth, here in this chamber at six o'clock. We have uh, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Davis, myself. I need one more. You're tentatively okay to attend. Do y'all understand what we just did? Yeah. <laughs> I hope y'all okay. Before y'all changed all this, y'all gave him ideas on how he could change his plan to get it approved. What do we need to do to stop it? What we're trying to do is reduce the density is what y'all request, and that's what he, what he did. He presented us, or there is a plan drawn. And he's going to show you that at this community meeting. At the community meeting is where it's it's just open. It's it's kind of informal that we can sit and discuss what y'all want, what you yeah. know, he, what's going on. We have your we have your we have your card. So do you have a homeowners? Uh, usually it goes through the homeowners association. Are those people that filled in cards? So anybody that's interested and in, you didn't fill in a card. To fill one in and uh, also it's on the website I think we have do we put that on the website you you all need to get the word out yeah uh, we can't get the word out for you but you all need to get the word out and if you all have any other ideas that you would like to have us try to incorporate in that pod or have the uh, the owner try to incorporate in that pod that's the time to talk about it and that's the time we will look at whatever suggestions you all have I didn't. I don't think I did it. Put me down as a yes. 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 Convoluted though it was. Yes. Okay. If y'all could clear the building, I'll give you a few minutes quietly. 
So we finished them all on here, right? Okay, we'll move on to ZC0607053. It's a major amendment to the PUD. It's, um, please leave quietly. It's uh, 22,600 square feet. The petitioner is Howard Daigle, Jr. The owner is the Shifuncta Club Estates. Uh, this parcel is located on the north side of Hummingbird Road, east of Briar Hollow Drive, lots 550 and 551, the Shifuncta Club Estates, phase two. It's in Ward 1, District 1. Staff. Petitioner is requesting a major amendment to the PUD to waive the required five-foot setback for the lots 550 and 551. There's currently a large green space area reserved for drainage purposes between the two lots. And if you see the drawing, it shows uh, what the, the, the request consists of. And staff does not have any issue with the request and would like to recommend approval. Is the petitioner I'm, present? I'm, I'm going to be approved. Well, let's see if the petitioner's present. Oh, okay. Uh, anybody in opposition of this? Okay. Well, Mr. Hines. Okay, I, ha I have a motion to approve. Nobody's here. Howard Daigle. The petitioner's not here. Mr. Delahousie. Do you have any problem to vote on this one? This is a major amendment to the PUD. Do you need to vote for it? Okay. Motion. Uh, excuse me. I have a motion excuse to me. approve. Yes. yes. And we haven't voted, second. and I have some comments. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, while this on its surface appears to be very, very easy, uh, the Landowners Association or the Homeowners Association, everybody thinks it's, it's okay. I just have a question. Um, these people will now have to get, technically have to get approval from the homeowners association ho or whoever actually owns that property adjacent to them to go on their property to do anything to their home. If they want to wash their windows, they technically have to go on somebody else's property to do it. And while it, it while everybody's s sitting around happy and, and loving each other, that's not a problem. But as soon as one of these people gets crossways with the homeowners association, then they're going to have hell to pay. But and I just want I just want that out there, and I realize we're probably going to approve it. But this ain't so simple, and it ain't so nice. Well, but we're not in control of the homeowners association, and this is a request, and that's it's, we had a motion. I I understand, but we don't have to do something wrong because the homeowners association. But how do we know agrees that? To it. It, it, you have to decide if, if it's wrong or not. We cannot. We're asked for a request. Let no. me hear what Mr. Darty has to say. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, reading the, the case and all the notes and everything, that it's uh, lots 550 and 551, and the uh, five-foot uh, area is only the green space uh, in between those two lots. Is that correct? So, I mean, Bill, to, to, to your point, uh, I don't think that there would be a problem because that's going to be, I'm not going to call it public land, but it's going to be undeveloped land. It, it will be undeveloped, but these people will not own it. That's correct. And that's to correct. go on, on someone else, someone else owns the property. It, it will be the property owners association will own that property. And to go on that property to do repairs or whatever to my house, I would have to technically have to get their permission. And like I say, when everybody's sitting around, everybody's happy and there's no problems, that's, that's all well and good. But if the homeowners association gets crossways with either one of these people, then there's going to be hell to pay. And I don't think anybody realizes that when they make these requests. That right. it's uh, a point, point of, okay. of interest and we, we need to be cognizant of that. We're setting up a potential problem. I have a motion. Yeah, you got it. I think you had a motion and a second. I you? had a second. Yeah. Please vote on this. To approve it, please vote on that motion. Motion approved. 
Next case, ZC120405, the existing zoning is an A1 suburban district. The proposed zoning is an A2 suburban district. It's two acres. The petitioner is the parish council by motion on uh, February 2nd, 12. The location is a parcel on the west side of South Fitzmaurice Road, north of Eagle Road, south of Bennett Drive, being 76473 South Fitzmaurice Road, Covington. It's in Ward 3, District 2. Staff. The 2025 future land use plan calls for residential and agricultural development in the area. Staff does not see a compelling reason to support the request as the parcel is surrounded by A1 zone property and recommends denial. Anybody familiar with this one? Bernie? Is there a petitioner here? Is it a petitioner? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Petitioner. I'm looking for. What we're trying to do, this is family land, and it was willed to my mother owns a house in one acre, and the other acre belongs to the other side of the family. My mother's in a nursing home. I need to sell this piece. They don't want to sell this piece, so they're willing to divide it. I can't, I'm, I can't do anything else about it. I'm also the real estate. We have a contract on the house in the one acre. And I had the councilman come out, or whoever, is there uh, any opposition to this? Okay, you sell it. Do you got a total of two acres, and you're it's looking to go? It's two acres on South Fitzmorris Road, Fountain Road. There's a house. This acre's empty. They don't want to build on it, but they don't want to sell it because it was their dad's. This is my mother's house and one acre. And the wheel left her the house an acre, but not the other acre. And I can't oh. sell. You see what I'm saying? Motion to approve. Second. I'll second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Please vote on that motion to approve. Motion approved. Okay, the next case is ZC 120406. Existing is an A2 suburban district. The proposed is an A2 suburban district with a mobile home overlay. It's uh, 1.088 acres and the petitioner is the parish council by motion made on February 2nd, 12. The parcel is on the south side of uh, Louisiana Highway 22, west of Indian Trace Boulevard. <clears throat> it's in Ward 1, District 1. Staff. The 2025 future land use plan calls for residential and agricultural development in the area, including mobile homes. There are a few mobile homes in the area, but the site is mainly surrounded by stick-built homes. Staff has no objection to the request and recommends approval. Is the petitioner present? <coughs> yes, sir, state your name, please. Donald Peter. And you have anything to add to that? Just, uh, it's just a mobile uh, home. Yeah, just for my daughter. Okay. Commission, is there any, anybody in opposition? Okay. I have a Mr. question. Matthew. Um, it looked to me like there already is a mobile home on this property. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So you're wanting to add an additional mobile home? Or is well, that that's for, the, for this mobile home that's on there. Okay, so, so you, you just want to bring it into compliance correct. with the one mobile home that's already there. Correct. Not to add two mobile no, homes. Sir. Okay, I no problem with that then. Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. You can get, turn in that card to the staff oh, if you want to. Okay, I have a motion and a second uh, to approve. The motion was to approve. Please vote on that motion. Motion passes. Okay, ZC 1204027, the existing is an A3 suburban district. The proposed zoning is an A5 two-family residential district. It's 10,500 square feet. The petitioner is Steve Owens. The owner is Barbara Ross Owens. The parcel is located on the north side of up Pier Street, east of US uh, 190 Service Road, west of Orleans Avenue, being lots 20 and 21 in Square 23 in Ozone Park. It's in Ward 4, District 5. Staff. 
The 2025 Future Land Use Plan designates the area to be developed with residential uses. The site proposed to be developed with a duplex is directly abutting A5 zoning on the south and east sides. Considering that there are some existing duplexes on Pear Street, staff does not have any objection and would like to recommend approval. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? Yeah, I'm Steve Owens and I'm representing my mom. Uh, she bought these lots back in 82, and they were zoned for duplexes, and she built one duplex, and then they changed the zoning to single family, and she hasn't done anything with it since then, and she'd like to sell the property because she's retired to California. Thank you. All right. Um, you said there's, th there's some, there's some uh, uh, duplexes already there? Not right on this property. Door. Not on this right property, next but door, next door. Yeah. No, the property I is vacant. Right. Okay. Mr. Hines, I have some opposition if we'd like to hear. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Opposition. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I think I do not want to speak. Who wants to speak? Uh, Ms. Carolyn. Word guard. Ms. Carolyn here. Yeah. I tried the last names. <laughs> I do good on the first. It's okay. Uh, my name is Carolyn Wiegand, and I live at 224 Bodette, which is directly behind this lot, part of my pro. This lot covers about half of my backyard on Pear Street. I'm opposed for several reasons. One reason is uh, comprehensive rezoning, which was just a couple of years ago, reviewed all the zoning classifications in this unincorporated St. Tammany and resulted in a single family designation for this lot. There are single family homes from this lot all the way to the service road on Pear, behind it on Beaudet, all along Orleans. Uh, so there may be a double next to it and a d two doubles next to it, but that's in the past prior to the comprehensive rezoning where we would hope that we would not have to keep coming and, re and facing these issues. There's no other reason to rezone this from single family to double except for the, uh, for the owner to make more money. The owner lives in California and it's for her to make more money at the expense of the residents and the homeowners who live here. That's definitely going to depress our quality of life and our property values. Also, uh, this, uh, the owner has, Ms. Owens, has, has the opportunity to sell her lots. I've been there 18 years. I, I asked to buy her lot behind me so I wouldn't have to face this <laughs> at this time. And uh, she was too high, so I bought the three lots next to her. Uh, at a much less price than her that she wanted for her two lots. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm a little nervous. That's okay. you oh, doing, I, doing I, oh, my point was that at, that was about 18 years ago. Twice since then I have called her and offered to buy the lots, try to buy the lots. She was always too high. So she is still possessing of these lots probably 20 plus years. I don't know if she's had any other offers, but uh, I know she's had mine. So I would I request that you please deny this zoning. We need single family zoning. We don't need any more density right there. Uh, and we don't, just because there's two doubles next to it, does, is no reason to add another double to this area. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss Elizabeth, is it Bullock? Bullock. Bullock. I'm surprised you can read my handwriting. <laughs> I used there is a Bullock with a U. I thought it was in Today, and my arms are shaking. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Bolick, and I live at the corner of Orleans and Beaudet, where my husband and I have been for the last 26 years. Uh, we have 30 acres there, including 108 of these lots of record. Basically, starting with Bart Pepperman and continuing with Marty Gould, there was a recognition that although there were duplexes on Pear and Beach Street, that that was on the south side, and that there were two existing duplexes on the north side, but that they realized they had to draw a line somewhere. So basically, for many, many years, there have been only single-family homes permitted on the north side of Pear and on Beaudet. And those two abut each other with 150-foot depths of lots. These two lots are 35 by 150s from a 1908 subdivision of record. So you're really talking a 70-foot width to begin with here. Even during the uh, boom that came after Katrina when we were trying to provide all, for all kinds of affordable housing in the area, there were all kinds of exemptions made, and some of these houses went in at 55 and 60 foot widths on both Pear and Orleans, but I mean Beaudet. But nevertheless, they were single family homes. 
And that line has been drawn and honored prior to the comprehensive rezoning, which both my husband and I attended the meetings for both here and the area around Lacombe where we have land. So all the people who had issues had an opportunity to come out and see it. I know talking with Sidney Fontenot that, that, that they were honoring the drawing of the line on the duplexes. And again, I share uh, Carol's concern. There are small starter homes right next door. There's nothing wrong if she wants to sell the lot to put another small starter home. Um, people need those to be able to commute, and I would support that, but I can't see this rezoning. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, the last person I wish to speak was Mr. Fred Schultz. Good evening, I'm Fred Schott, and I live at 239 Pear Street, uh, just maybe like a few hundred yards or a hundred yards away from that property, and I've uh, built my own house, and I've lived in that single house, and my sister-in-law next door lives in her house. I lived there for 31 years, and my sister-in-law's house I uh, built right after for 30 years. <laughs> and these, uh, the neighborhood has improved quite a bit. There's a lot of single houses. There are some doubles, but I object to the doubles houses. The people that live there uh, are temporary, it seems. They are rentees, and uh, I, I prefer to have the neighborhood with uh, uh, people who own their own property and take care of their own property and are concerned and want to stay there. However, I think the people who rent houses, uh, like I said, are temporary uh, people, and uh, like I prefer to have somebody take care of their own property and and try to improve it instead of let it uh, diminish in in, uh, in value and and just the likability of it. <laughs> so. That's about what I have to say, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'll note that I have other, oh, you want to come up? Okay, come on up. I, I had other cards that were opposed with just comments, but they didn't wish to speak. My name is Marlene Markell, and I actually live on Pear Street. I'm at the very uh, end of Pear Street. I agree with what everybody has said thus far. There are a number, excuse me, there are, there are a number of duplexes that are currently on Pear Street. Um, and at any given time, three, four, or five of them are up for rent. I, I'm not sure whether they rent for six months or at a year at a time, but they're, con they're always up for rent. The lot in question is a very small lot. There are three homes currently to, um, I think, the uh, west side of it, and they are very small homes. There are no garages. The driveways are very small. Currently, the owners of those ho homes either park in on the front lawn, um, in the driveway and occasionally on the street. Traffic is also a big issue with all the duplexes, um, with people coming and going. So I, I hope you uh, vote down this, uh, this uh, amendment, yes. Did you fill out a card? Yes, I did, Marlene Markell, yes, is it, yes. Let's see if we got that. I didn't see where you yes. marked Did you mark not speak at first? No, I did mark uh, that I'd like to speak. Okay, if we, we'll check to see. Yeah, but I, by, as I said, we, I really would like just a single family homes as opposed to the duplexes. Mr. Owens, your rebuttal, please. When my mom bought these lots in good faith 30 years ago, they were zoned duplex. And I think most of the people that spoke had lived there since then. They were aware of that when they bought their places. Um, my mom paid 8,000 for the lot, 6,500 in taxes. I paid 5,500 to get it cleaned up after Katrina because all the neighbors used it as a dumping ground. Over the back fence, I had paint thrown over and sheetrock buckets, even a mattress. Um, I've had two offers to buy the lot, one for $12,000, which doesn't cover the cost and the taxes, and the other is for $25,000 if it was zoned for duplexes. So you can see the difference. All I'm trying to do is help my mom in her retirement <coughs> and make her an investment of 30 years work for her. I think it's reasonable to have it duplexes, because that's the way it was, and there's duplexes all up and down the road. Now, thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Do y'all have anything else? To say? Okay. <laughs> you have three minutes. <laughs> I'm sympathetic to Mr. Owens, although you don't know if the paint and the debris came from the duplexes and the rental properties that are the, the eyesore portion of the neighborhood. Um, I can only restate, if you hear, this is, this is about money for him and for his mother. For us, it's about where we live. And it reinforces, if anything, the very nature that we're seeing. All zoning is about money. I mean, if you could give high density to everybody or highway commercial, it's always about money. So I realize not all investment makes, makes money for someone, but I'm asking you to uh, respect the comprehensive rezoning and the request of the people who actually live there and who've invested significantly more money than Mrs. Owens. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, all right, I'll turn it over to council. Mr. Matthews? Yeah. Um, Commission? I think there has been an understanding for a very long period of time uh, and that was reiterated to me by uh, a couple of the councilmen, that uh, they have pretty much tried to draw a line as to where the duplexes will stop. Um, and it's pretty clear that the neighborhood wants that, that line to be uh, maintained and respected. Um, it's clear that, that the ask for the rezoning doesn't have anything to do with anybody actually wanting to live on the property. It's just to sell it. I think there's a for sale sign out in front of the property as we speak. Um, there is a, I think, a, a two, two problems. One, it appears from the um, plat we have that the house that is next door, the duplex that is next door, their driveway actually encroaches on this, uh, this site, which is a problem that's going to have to be dealt with in any event. Uh, also, the size, minimum size requirement for an A5 lot, what, what is that, Helen? I can save you the trouble. It's 75 feet. It's 75 feet. This is a 70-foot lot. So we would be rezoning a 70 foot lot, which is in the minimum is 75. Uh, I don't think we, sh we could or, sh or should uh, take that, that tack to do that. I think we're setting a, a bad precedent. Uh, therefore, I would uh, make a motion to deny. Second. We? I'm going to turn it off, please. Uh, you get it. We've got a lot more stuff. Oh, go ahead. No, I agree with Ms., uh, Mr. Matthews as well. You look like the A5, is, which is an intense zoning, trying to move into an A3 zoning, even though there's some already. Uh, and Paris Street seems to be the dividing line. I agree with Mr. Matthews. Not. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay, I'm sorry. Are you okay? All right, your light's still on, Bernie. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Who seconded it? Celeste, Celeste okay. seconded. Complete. Was it to approve or deny? I can't hear you. What? To approve or deny? <coughs> to deny. Okay. Did you clear it? I haven't voted. Did y'all vote already? She didn't know whether she cleared it. Clear it. Clear it. And this is to vote to deny. The motion is to deny. Seven two. You do have the right to appeal, Mr. Yes. Owens. Yes. By the way, if you want to do that, there's cards at the end of this uh, railing here. If you want to appeal the decision made by this commission, you have the right to appeal. So. Yeah, we're we're merely a recommendation to the council. The council will have to vote on it. Okay. The next case. Is ZC 120409 existing as a neighbor uh, NC4 neighborhood institutional district? The proposed zoning is an A2 um, suburban district. It's 15,900 square feet. The petitioner is, is Jack J. Menheim. The owners are Jack and Stephanie Menheim. 
A parcel is located on the west side of St. Landry Street, north of um, Louisiana Highway 36, being part of Lot 8, Garland addition to the town of Claiborne. And it's in Council, <coughs> Ward 3, District 2. Staff. The 2025 Future Land Use Plan calls for the area to be developed with residential uses. The neighboring parcels are either undeveloped or developed with the residents. Staff has no objection to the request and would like to recommend approval. Okay, petitioner. Let me see, is there any opposition to this? Okay, for the record, go ahead. Uh, good evening, my name is Andrew Mendheim. Um, I'm here representing uh, Jack Menheim, and as you might have guessed, he's not only one of my best clients, but also my father. Uh, <laughs> this matter involves an application to rezone a, a roughly a 160 foot by 100 foot lot from NC4 to A2. Uh, the subject property, just to orient you, is uh, located a mile, maybe slightly more uh, than a mile east of, of the Claiborne Hill area in Covington um, on the north side of Highway 6 towards Abita. So if you're going, going east down Highway 26 from Covington, um, St. Landry Street would be on the left, not more than a mile or so. But some years ago, my client acquired this parcel along with a couple of other lots in the vicinity, in the vicinity from his uncle. Uh, it wasn't really much of an investment uh, so much at the time as it, uh, it was a way to, to allow his uncle to generate some, some needed cash at the time. Ultimately, uh, my client's goal is to have the option to build a single family residence uh, somewhere in the hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar range, which would be compatible with the with the homes in the area. Uh, it, it should be noted that he doesn't really have any plans to to go forward with building a home at the moment. But uh, you know, in the future, if the opportunity were present itself, he'd he'd like that opportunity. Um, as mentioned earlier, the rezone would take the current track from NC four to A two. All of the parcels immediately south of my client's property, uh, fronting Highway thirty six. Uh, are currently zoned in C4, which is fitting because of the commercial growth towards Abita from Co Covington, coupled with the vis visibility that is accompanied by fronting the highway. However, uh, as I mentioned, Jack's property does not front Highway 36, and thus if someone were interested in, in purchasing a parcel in that area for an NC4 designated use, uh, his parcel would <coughs> obviously not be the competitive alternative relative to the other NC4 lots that do front on the highway. Uh, to the north of the subject property, is a single family home across the street to the east is another single family home to the west of the property there are single family homes and generally the entire area we're talking about is predominantly single family residences um, thus you know the the proposed a2 zone would be compatible with with the area uh, additionally um, i think as Ms. kasbaum pointed out we're not aware of any current opposition uh, for the rezone from nc4 to a2 and so uh, respectfully request that you recommend approval. Thank you. I think that's a uh, good recommendation to go ahead and approve this. Do we have any opposition? No. I have a, I have a point. Okay. How can we approve A2 if it's only 15,900 square foot? And that A4? It's not big enough to It doesn't A2. meet the minimum lot size of requirements. However, you know, staff recommended approval, and basically, if it's rezoned to A4, you have a potential of introducing some more A4 in the area. Right. Sure, yeah. but, but they can't add, build on this lot. They can still build on it. Yes, they, they will have to meet the lot yeah. of record requirements. It's an existing lot. Yeah, They're just trying to rezone it. From can we commercial. change it to A2, even though it's 15,000 square feet? Is That's the question. What I'm can you yeah, it's possible. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yes. Okay, I have a motion. Second. Have a second. Anyone else have any comments? Can vote on the motion. Yeah. Motion is approved. Okay, go to the plan review cases. We have a um, plan review PR 12 Use is an addi addition to an existing warehouse. It was withdrawn. Yes. <laughs> Just read that. Very good. We're finished. Oh, do we have any old business? Any new business? Uh, Move we adjourn. I hear I've got the motion to adjourn. Yep, Mr. J. Do you have that appeal form? Okay. All right. Take all my notes and I wrote all this. Stuff. I'd like to, to let the, the council know that our appeals appears. Uh, Emil will not be back. He has not been uh, reappointed. 
but I'd like to publicly thank Emil for his long service and his yeoman service as our chairman. Hear, hear.